an orchestra adventure with Maestro Carl and friends. Brilliant Brass! One night, one night only. This is your chance to get up close and personal with the brilliant brass musicians of the Calgary Philharmonic. One minute, one minute. We're rolling. Hi, everyone. That overture was so majestic and heroic sounding that I was suddenly feeling extra motivated to study. I'm preparing to lead a rehearsal that's coming up very soon. But I know why you're here. You're keen to learn about the instruments that make up the brass section of a symphony orchestra. Brass musicians produce sound by blowing air into their instruments, which have valves or slides that change which notes are sounded. All of these instruments have a similar mouthpiece. The way that the players vibrate their lips into the mouthpiece is especially important because it determines how high or low and how loud or soft they play. Well, that's pretty much it. I think I'll get back to studying now. Is anyone expecting a call? Hello? Mr. Prime Minister? Is that you? No, no, it's two cups of water to one cup of rice. Carl, it's Dave Reed, principal bass trombonist of the Calgary Philharmonic. Isn't it time we start the brilliant brass episode? Oh, hey Dave. <laughs> Sorry, I thought you were someone else. Yeah, you're right. I've just got a rehearsal coming up and I really need to study, but maybe you could teach us about the trombone. Well, the trombones are the only instruments in the orchestra to have a slide, which you have to manually adjust to find the correct pitch. This is turning into a 3D trombone experience. So really, you have to be a lot smarter to play the trombone than the other brass instruments that use this more automated system of finger valves to change the notes. Now the bass trombone uses extension valves with the slide to get the lowest notes on the instrument. Check out this super old bass trombone I have. Before they came up with the extension valves, they had to make the slide really long so long you had to use a handle to reach the lowest notes. It's too long for human arms. Maybe it was originally designed for gorillas to play. But as we all know, the trombone playing gorillas went extinct years ago. When I think of brass instruments, I think of a big, loud sound. But brass instruments don't always play loud, do they? Could you play something lyrical? Nice! That was from Maurice Ravel's most famous piece, Bolero. Well, I'm gonna get back to studying now. Thanks for all the pro tips, Dave. My pleasure. See you later, everyone. That was quite interesting. All right, I'm running out of time here. Hello, this had better be a brass musician. Hey, whoa there, maestro grumpy pants. This is Heather Wooten calling. Oh, Heather, assistant principal horn of the Calgary Phil. Wonderful timing. Could you tell us a little bit about the French horn? Of course, this is the French horn, though it's usually just called the horn. Like all brass.
brass musicians, a big part of how we make our sound comes just from how we use our lips. This is what I'm doing with my mouth. It's like blowing a big raspberry. Let's all try and make that sound together, shall we? When we add the mouthpiece to the instrument, the sound we make with our lips becomes amplified through the body of the horn. This is the natural horn. It's basically the ancestor of the modern horn that I play in the orchestra. It has no vowels and I change the notes using only my lips and sometimes by cupping my hand in the bell of the horn like this. Wow, it's really impressive how much brass musicians determine which notes they're playing just by using their mouths. I know, right? <laughs> I guess you can make an instrument out of anything these days. Okay, we're, we're getting a bit off track here. Sorry, I get carried away. Here's the modern horn. These vowels let me change notes more easily just by moving my fingers. For some reason, I suddenly feel like I'm following a river on an epic quest. Thanks so much, Heather. See you later, Carl. Aha, the notorious fourth horn solo from Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. All right, let's do a Composer Profile. Composer Profile. Ludwig van Beethoven was born in 1770 in Bonn, Germany, but spent most of his life in the musical capital of Europe, Vienna. The nobility there believed so strongly in Beethoven's music that they supported him financially throughout his life, just to keep him in town. Beethoven's music cuts straight to the core. We feel his struggles to get along with others due to his temper. We feel the peace he found when immersing himself in nature and we feel the love he felt for mankind as a whole, all expressed through his music. Beethoven began to lose his hearing when he was still quite young and was completely deaf by the end of his life, which means he was writing so many of his masterpieces in his head. Beethoven imagined what music could be on a whole new scale than what came before him and changed the course of music history forever. Pencils, got my score. Let's get down to work. Come on! Yes, hello. Hey Carl, this is Adam Zanatelli, principal trumpet of the Calgary Philharmonic, and I'm calling to tell you all about the trumpet. In orchestral music, the trumpet usually plays the lead voice of the brass section. Because of the way the instrument sounds, we often get to play big melodies at climactic moments. of years, the trumpet was used mainly in battle to rally the troops, or while hunting to flush animals out into the open. But we can also play with a soft, shiny sound.
Very nice indeed. Now, when musicians play loud or soft, we have special terms for those different levels of volume, don't we? That's right. Most of the musical indications we're used to reading are actually Italian words. When composers started to write in the music whether the players should play loud or soft, slow or fast, most of the exciting music of the day was coming from Italy. So let's learn a couple of these terms now. Repeat after me. When we play loudly, we're playing forte. Forte. When we play quietly, we're playing piano. Piano. When we get louder as we go, that's called a crescendo. Crescendo. And when we get softer, as we play, that's called a diminuendo. Diminuendo. Grazie mille. Adesso parlo benissimo italiano. Prego. A presto. I really need to get down to work, otherwise I'm going to be totally unprepared for this rehearsal. When will this madness cease? Hello? Mom, I can't really do- But conducting is a real job. No, I don't just take credit while the musicians do all the work. Uh, okay. Love you too. Hello? Hi, I'm calling from the Department of Musical Excellence. Would you be willing to spare a few moments to answer a quick tuba-related survey? Sure. I love answering surveys over the phone. Alright. What's your favorite tuba solo? Is it this passage from Gustav Mahler's First Symphony? What about the solo passage from Wagner's Die Meistersinger Overture that ends with the magnificent tuba trill? Or what about the famous solo from the movement in Mazorsky's pictures at an exhibition. Wait a minute. Is this Tom McCaslin, principal tuba of the Calgary Phil? Oh, you got me. I'm sorry. I'm just having a bit of a tuba identity crisis. It just seems that every time I have a solo in the orchestra, some other instrument has already gotten to play that melody. But the tuba plays such a crucial role in the orchestra. It has such a big, beautiful, round sound. Tuba or not tuba? That is the question. Tuba, indeed! The tuba is actually the youngest instrument in the orchestra. It was invented more recently than all the rest. Not only does the tuba lay down the bass lines for the brass section as its lowest instrument, but it also helps blend the sound throughout different sections of the orchestra. Even though there are different groups of instruments in the orchestra, a huge part of what makes the magic happen is how we all blend together to create marvelous sounds. Wow, that's inspiring. Music really is fascinating. You've got that right, Carl. Now good luck with that rehearsal. Well, everyone, thanks so much for joining us. I don't know about you, but I've never felt more knowledgeable about the brass instruments that play in a symphony orchestra. The French horn, trumpet, trombone, and tuba. You know what? I think I'm going to be okay for that rehearsal with everything that we've learned today. What? Music for strings? Percussion? And kazoo? What the-